from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, and welcome to a special CUBE conversation. Happy to welcome back to the program, Trey Layton, who's the SVP of Engineering with Dell EMC. Trey, great to see you. Hi, Stu, how are you? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. So, uh, there's the Dell Technology Summit happening in Austin, Texas. Uh, let's not hide the lead. There's uh, some, some news around things you've been working on for a while. Uh, why don't you share the update with our audience? Well, myself and my team have been working on a new product that we are announcing at Dell Technology Summit called Power One. And uh, we are positioning in the market as autonomous infrastructure. It's a great combination of all the wonderful pr uh, products in the Dell Technologies portfolio, combined with some very innovative automation that makes integrating the product an autonomous outcome. All right, first of all, with, with the name Power in it, we know that that's the branding that Dell likes, uh, something that's going to be with us for a while. Uh, you, you talk about all-in-one. You've got some history, we, we have some history, uh, back pulling various solutions together, talk about compute, network, and storage, uh, what back in the day we called converged infrastructure. Uh, explain how all-in-one, uh, you know, what, what is the all uh, in the all-in-one? So first of all, it's a system where you can get all of Dell technologies in one package. The, the next thing is about building on that decade's worth of experience of building Converge products and learning about the different, different intricacies of integrating those products and instead of relying upon humans to integrate those technologies together to deliver an outcome for a customer, embedding that intelligence and in software to make it easy for an operator to drive a configuration to deliver an outcome for a customer to operate a modern data center environment. So, uh, it's exciting stuff, Trey, because you know the, the design principle before was, let's simplify as much as we can. Let's get that entire rack, if you will, be the unit of infrastructure that people manage, but what I hear you talking about, you know, automation and software and even, you know, we're not replacing the humans, we're augmenting what they're doing by having automation take over. Uh, that's powerful stuff. We've talked about intelligence and automation for, I, I, I'd say, all of our careers. Um, so explain a little bit, you know, this autonomous, what really, you know, where is that automation and, uh, you know, how come it is different today than it might have been five or 10 years ago? Well, you think about all the things that we've learned in, in 10 years of building a packaged product to actually deliver an outcome for a customer. Re requiring some degree of manual intervention, intervention but a sim significant amount of simplicity that we've built in those products to deliver an outcome. One of the things that's uh, true about today is that as organizations are on a digital transformation journey, they are struggling with a high degree of intake of technology while also maintaining the products that they, they manage on a daily basis to quote unquote keep the lights on. What, what we have done is, is say, how can we take the innovations that we've built in our products that are infrastructure as code and how can we build software intelligence that understands based on the, the operator's desired outcome for an integration, we employ Dell engineering best practices to deliver that outcome. So a, a key element of the product is housing this intelligence and in software that drives this automated outcome through best practices for how we engineer products together. All right. Trey, you've got engineering. Bring us in a little side of the team. Uh, you know, building now in 2019. What are the pieces that you had? What's different about the team that you had to build this? And you know, is there any unique IP that, that your team and, and this product brings uh, beyond what was already available in the marketplace? Yeah, so uh, first of all, the team is a global team that we've actually been in the process of hiring in the last year plus, uh, year and a half plus. And uh, it's a very young team, uh, different skill set. Uh, we learned very early on that if we're going to build a product with embedded automation, you needed to have experience in understanding how, what are the best practices for integrating the, 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 the technologies in the product. 
but simultaneously you needed people who understood how to write code that made that outcome possible. And so really bringing and building a global team of DevOps-minded individuals that understood open source technologies, that understood our VMware ecosystem, that understood the Dell EMC ecosystem, and more importantly, the larger Dell Technologies ecosystem for, for bringing those products together. And I'll tell you, it's a diverse uh, culture of individuals. Um, what I'm most excited about is, while we're very much focused on delivering VMware outcomes in this first release, the product that we've built is capable of delivering any type of outcome, whether it be another type of virtualization environment or another type of application outcome. The, 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 the software is designed to deliver an integration that is designed to support a customer's production operation. The intelligence or the product that we built to do that is called the Power One Controller. And embedded in that is software that a customer can drive either through a user interface or they can use automation technologies that they have in-house to call on this controller programmatically to execute those outcomes, as opposed to being chained to a user interface that an operator has to learn as a new element of their environment. Yeah, Trey, it really reminds me of the conversations I've been having with customers over the last you know, decade or more, is that core you know, understanding and building my compute infrastructure, my storage infrastructure, uh, my networking infrastructure, I still need to understand some of those pieces, but it is much more about the software, the operating model, uh, and it's, you know, as, as we know, we're living in a software world. Well, it's, it's interesting that you say that because you and I both know, based on our history, that, that there are complexities that we've worked to make simpler to operate, but a customer today struggles to have expertise dedicated to how do I build an underlying network fabric? How do I deploy a software virtualization layer on top of that network fabric? How do I deploy storage arrays in a manner where the I.O. is optimized not only for performance, but also for survivability? How do I carve up my compute resources in a manner that most efficiently supports the virtualization or container outcome that I'm deploying? There's a tremendous amount of skill that you need to have to, to employ the best practices to integrate all those technologies together. And what we are doing is merely bringing those uh, capabilities in software so that an operator can say, I want to deploy this many cores with this much memory and associate it to this much capacity of external storage. And all the underlying in-order configuration dependencies happen through the intelligence that we've built in automation to drive the right outcome for the customer. Okay, so Trey, when, when I've been digging into the software world and you talk to the people that are building applications, observability is something that, that's been coming up a, a bunch. It, it's not just understanding what I have, but you know, where's the flows of information, uh, Ansible, New Relic, they're all talking about, you know, in a containerized microservices world, uh, there are different ways that I need to look at the entire system. Uh, how does that kind of mindset and thinking fit into the design of Power One? Well, it's actually an age-old problem that we've had as we've began to have shared infrastructure to run, whether they be containerized services or virtualized uh, services, or containers running in virtualized services. It's how do we associate what's running to the underlying infrastructure so that if we have a problem in the underlying infrastructure that we're managing, that we target a, a resolution. And that resolution could be increased performance so that that service can run better, or it could be some type of underlying failure that we want to ensure that as survivability is kicked in, that we employ more resource to support expansion or just a continuation and burst of capability that's needed. When we built Power One, we thought about, it is a system. 
how do we give observability of that system in the context of a system to understand the associated dependencies so that we could quickly guide the operator to identifying the area that they needed to look at from an infrastructure perspective and either influence or simply respond to um, instead of a more traditional mode of on-premises management is let me go find where the problem is and see if this fixes it. We have given observability to specifically identify where the issue is and enable the operator to go target that. All right, uh, so Trey, you mentioned the traditional uh, model of doing things. What, what, what does PowerOne mean for, uh, you know, say for example, VxBlock as something, uh, you know, over, over a decade uh, out there on the market. Uh, you know, there, there's been lots of discussions forever. The Cisco stack, the Dell stack, and VMware, uh, you know, all those challenges. So uh, tell, tell us what this means for VxBlock. So first of all, um, I couldn't say enough good things about the, the VBlock team, it's a part of um, the organization that I'm in. Um, we are very much committed to VBlock engineering going forward, and Power One is an expansion of our portfolio as opposed to um, a replacement of. We, we value our partnership with Cisco significantly. Customers are committed to acquiring Cisco technologies in concert with our storage and data protection products. And VBlock is all about giving customers an ability to have a converged experience with our storage technologies and a very unique experience that surrounds the offers that we deliver in that space. I will tell you that the automation that we're building in Power One is also something that we're targeting at our entire portfolio, as opposed to just isolating into this one product. The, the dawn of autonomous infrastructure in our minds is not about isolating that technology to one product, but it's about bringing it to our entire portfolio of products to make our customers' experience is better in managing and consuming the technologies they buy from us. You know, well, definitely something we've we've heard from uh, Jeff Clark, Jeff Boudreau, and the, and the, the team is uh, the portfolio inside of Dell EMC is going through a lot of simplification. Uh, so that the whole autonomous infrastructure, Power One, how should we be thinking about you know where this fits kind of in the overall market? So, it very much includes our purpose-built storage portfolio uh, technologies, our data protection. It includes our networking technologies and some unique um, automation capabilities that we've built in it to enable the IT operator to not have to worry about programming the fabric, that we actually sense and understand the changes in the virtualization environment and deploy those configurations to the underlying network infrastructure. And it's all about using our P Power Edge portfolio of servers. So Power One is very much about consuming our data center technologies all in one package. That that positioning in the market in, in, in the market is complementary to customers who want to acquire VX Block and are looking to pair Cisco technologies with Dell Storage. And m more importantly, our HCI portfolio is a key element of our total offer to customers where customers are looking to deploy infrastructure with software-defined storage characteristics and a very unique management experience and simplified operations. Um, the HCI portfolio is there as well. So I, I often engage specifically as we talk about the exclusively Dell port portfolio it's not an or conversation, it's an and. It's which applications are you deploying in your data center environment? What use cases are you deploying? How is the underlying infrastructure optimized to best address the goals that you have for that deployment? And so that's why we've taken a portfolio approach as opposed to uh, one product to address every use case that's on the in the market. All right. So Trey, we, we, we've talked a lot about operations and the, the way we design things. We haven't talked about cloud. You know, it very much we believe cloud is as much an operating model as it is you know, a place. Uh, it's a journey, not a destination. Uh, hybrid cloud is, is what most customers have today. They have multiple clouds, but uh, you know, we, we think one of the challenges of the day is, is helping to get more value out of the 
some of what you have than the individual pieces would be on their own. So where does where does Power One fit into the Dell Tech Cloud story? And you know, would love to also hear just where it fits into the kind of the broader cloud discussions that we have when we're at a Dell show, a VMware show, uh, or, or beyond. Yeah, so it's, it's an interesting discussion because I think we begin to drift into saying a thing is cloud. And I, I think more outcomes are cloud and it's a combination of software and infrastructure. Power One is an infrastructure uh, element that is very much a part of the Dell Technologies cloud uh, strategy. But Dell Technologies cloud is more about our entire portfolio of software and infrastructure participating in a common ecosystem to deliver that cloud outcome for customers. And so, Del, uh, so Power One is absolutely a part of the Dell Technologies cloud, and we're excited about continuing down the automation enhancement path to make those outcomes more possible for customers as we go throughout time. So initially, uh, Power One is very much an infrastructure resource uh, in, in uh, Dell Technologies Cloud. Over time, you're going to see even greater enhancements, as you will see enhancements across our entire portfolio of technologies in participating in the larger Dell Technologies Cloud ecosystem story. Okay, and, and just to connect the dots, because when I look at those pieces and we talk about as customers are doing hybrid cloud and multi-cloud, if they're a VMware shop, VCF is an important piece of that, and that is part of you know, VMware Cloud on AWS, what they're doing with Azure, uh, with Google, so this, plugs in, if you, you know, my words, into that, that broader, uh, you know, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud discussion that customers are having. Absolutely, I, you think about it in layers. We are building an infrastructure layer at Dell EMC that enables that Dell Technologies cloud layer to be possible through the VMware ecosystem of technologies making that multi-cloud, that private cloud, uh, um, um, functionality realized. The VMware ecosystem is robust in its approach to supporting multi-cloud environments, as well as deploying the virtualization and container uh, t technologies that are critical for building in a modern enterprise. And so we are an element of that strategy as opposed to um, the exclusive uh, pen point resource in the strategy. All of the infrastructure products in, in the portfolio will participate in the Dell Technologies Cloud, and we're excited about the innovation that we can bring and making the Dell Technologies strategy and vision more easily realized by our customers. Okay, and, and Trey, when, when I think of Power One, uh, you know, what market segments uh, do, do we think are going to kind of be the, uh, you know, the first customer for this? And you know, any specific, you know, roles or inside a customer that should be the ones looking at this? Yes, great question. So as we look at markets, um, you look at organizations who are looking to deploy a data center resource. Um, we can go as small as four servers, but candidly, if you're deploying a data center with four servers, um, there are other items in our portfolio that are better positioned, like hyperconverged to start in that place. But if you're looking to deploy a data center where you're looking to go tens, twenties, hundreds of servers, um, and you want external storage, uh, in, in, in the offer, then Power One is a great starting point. If you think about the scalability, and we haven't touched on it, that we've built in Power One, at launch, um, we're going to support 270 uh, servers in the architecture. Very quickly, we will expand into supporting what's uh, what's described as a multi-pod uh, architecture, where we will get beyond 700 servers and then move into thousands of servers where the architecture is actually designed to support over 7,600 servers. In concert with that, at day one we will support multiple storage arrays as well, so deploying multiple PowerMax storage arrays as a storage domain to support this. So when we talk about markets, we talk about the ability to address uh, medium-sized organizations, data center use cases, all the way up to the largest enterprises uh, or service providers in the world, uh, data center deployments, um, and an all Dell technology stack. All right, Trey, uh, for give us the final word on this. One or two things you want people to understand and know about Power One as they walk away. 
So I think the most important thing to take away is, is that this is a way to acquire Dell Technologies products all in one place, in one package, in an incredible user experience. The way we're going to sustain that user experience and maintain that value proposition to customers is around the autonomous infrastructure packaging that we've built and the software that we're delivering. Utilizing some of the most advanced automation characteristics that are out there on the market combined with some of the brightest minds to integrate these technologies together. Customers just need to get to production operations. And when you can acquire a product that houses the intelligence to get to that outcome faster, there's a greater return on your invested capital when you're buying this product. And that's the most important thing, I think, to walk away, away from. We are committed to helping get our, our customers get to operational uh, outcomes faster. And these technologies that we've built in this product are delivering on that promise. Well, Trey, congratulations to you and the team. We always love to see when you know you go behind the scenes, we kind of rebuild from a clean sheet of paper, building on the history that you have, listening to your customers strongly, and uh, having something that's ready for today's modern era. Thanks so much. Thanks, Stu. All right, uh, be sure to check out theCUBE.net for all our coverage. I'm Stu Miniman, as always. Thanks for watching theCUBE.